to cut to the quick. There was Isaac Newton, believed in God, probably the greatest natural scientist who's ever lived. Stephen Hawking, of whom you've all heard, no doubt, he's the scientist in the wheelchair. He was just ahead of me at Cambridge, and in his brain power, he's light years ahead of me. And he doesn't believe in God. And he occupied until recently the very same chair in Cambridge that Isaac Newton occupied. Now here's the fascinating thing. Newton discovered the law of gravitation and used it as a reason for believing in God. Stephen Hawking uses it as a reason for denying the existence of God. And that focuses the question beautifully. How do you get from Newton to Hawking? How can one man use the law of gravity as evidence for the existence of God and another uses it as evidence to deny the existence of God? And I want to focus on that because I found it helpful um, <clears throat> to lead people in to this kind of debate. Now, of course, one of the things that stops people almost dead at the beginning of this discussion is the very vocal nature of some scientists. Carl Sagan, in the beginning of his book, Cosmos, the universe is all it is, was, or ever shall be. And people think, isn't that wonderful science? It isn't science at all. It's a statement by a scientist but it's not a statement of science. And one of the first things to learn in trying to understand what's going on in our culture is to realize that statements by scientists are not always statements of science. This was just a statement of Carl Sagan's atheism, that's all. A statement of his belief system. So that is the first thing to realize. The second thing uh, and perhaps we should put alongside that the comment by Richard Feynman, who was a brilliant Nobel Prize winning physicist from Caltech. Feynman was very apt to put a pin in people's pride. And he once said, outside of science, the scientist is just as dumb as the next guy. <laughs> and I think it's very important to realize that. And it's true of me too. So don't leave me out of this. The next thing to realize is that just as not every statement by a scientist is a statement of science, science is not the same as rationality. Science has had such powerful effects in technology in our world that there's grown up a view that we call scientism. And that is that science is the only way to truth. Now that is just logically false because the statement science is the only way to truth is not a statement of science, so if it's true, it's false. Perhaps it's too late at night for logic like that, is it? <laughs> well, never mind. It's logically contradictory. And some of the greatest scientists like Sir Peter Medawar, who won the Nobel Prize, says we do science a disservice if we ever suggest that it can answer all questions. It can't. It can't even answer the simple questions of a child. Where do I come from? Where am I going to? What's the meaning of life? And incidentally, here lies another answer to our question. Why science hasn't buried God. God and science answer different questions. Charles Townes, brilliant American uh, Nobel Prize winner, Christian, uh, invented the maser, the forerunner of the laser. He said, but look, science deals mainly with the hows. How does this work? How does that work? It doesn't deal with meaning and purpose. Religion, Christianity deals with meaning and purpose. They don't even deal with the same thing. So how one could eliminate the other is very, very difficult to see. So that brings us a little bit more into it. I'm passionate about science, but it is very dangerous to say it's the only way to truth. The great scientists all know it isn't. Einstein once said, you can speak of the ethical foundations of science, but you can't speak of the scientific foundations of ethics. 
Science is powerful, ladies and gentlemen. Why? Because it asks a limited number of questions. It doesn't deal with every area of existence. Weinberg admits, I think in his most recent book, that it doesn't deal with beauty and love. In fact, it doesn't deal with all the things that are most meaningful to every single one of us. It's limited. It's powerful. It's successful. But it cannot say anything about the big questions in this sense.